This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. For your information, three men pay tribute to Robin Williams through art. We'll tell you their story next on FYI. Good evening and thanks for joining us at FYI. I'm Ken Cara and we begin with headlines from FYI News 13 and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. A fatal crash in Foster Township this morning claimed the life of a Lee Heighton man. It happened around 4.30 this morning on Route 940 when a car collided with a tractor trailer. According to the Standard Speaker, troopers identified the victim as 34-year-old Jamin Zimmerman. He was pronounced dead at the scene. The driver of the tractor trailer, 60-year-old David Kleppinger of Palmerton, was not hurt. Hazleton police are asking for your help to find whoever assaulted a 94-year-old woman in her home in Hazleton last Friday. While the victim's condition is improving, police are still looking for the assailant. The assault happened last Friday after midnight at the woman's home in the 200 block of Muir Avenue. Court papers state the victim told police someone pushed her down the basement steps and began strangling her, asking where her, where her safe was. She told her attacker to leave her alone. The next thing she knew, she blacked out. Anyone with information Information is asked to call Hazleton Police or dial 911. Will Judge Coriel Stevens run for a full 10 year term on the Pennsylvania Supreme Court? Stevens of Sugarloaf Township is also the host of the Judge Stevens Show right here on SSP TV. He received Senate confirmation in July of last year to serve an interim two and a half year term on the state's highest court. But will he run for a full 10 year term? According to our media partner, the Standard Speaker, Stevens is definitely not ruling anything out when it comes to considering a court campaign in 2015. You can read the entire story on standardspeaker.com. Three artists from New York use their talent to pay tribute to Robin Williams. One of them has ties to the city of Hazleton, and he's also an actor who had the pleasure of working with Williams. Got three artists with us right now hailing from New York, but Apache here does have Hazleton ties, owns a house here in Hazleton, and in a separate segment we're going to talk about him bringing some of his art to the city of Hazleton, but right now we want to talk about a work all three of you worked on and that was what you're looking at right now a mural for robin williams the late actor that is in brooklyn new york and apache let's start with you you actually worked with robin williams yes. i mean did you kind of get this project going talk about that and also your time you spent with robin williams um i worked on a movie called brooklyn's angliest man with robin williams and he was like the nicest guy and then when he passed away mirrors had an idea and see and i was happy that they let me get in on it to do a mural you know what was Robin Williams like? I mean, you look at him, even me, you know, I was taken aback that night. Like, yeah. I didn't, I, I just didn't want to laugh that. I was very sad when I heard about the news. I felt like I knew yeah. him. And what was he like when you did get to work with him? Um, he was real nice. He was telling jokes all the time. He did a scene in Brooklyn Nine Against Man that he was just in a, a patient sheet. He was naked. And he was like, nobody take pictures of my butt. And he was doing that. He was just the nicest guy. And I felt really sad to, you know, that he passed away. And see, you told me, um, talking with C has been a lot of fun, and you told me inspired you to buy your first dress. Now, I don't know if that's true, but you can appreciate Mrs. Doubtfire. What makes you, what did you appreciate about Robin Williams, and what kind of motivated you throughout this project? By the way, it is true about the dress. Okay. <laughs> I'll wear it the next time I come. Um, as far as, as, far as uh, the, the painting goes with Robin Williams in there, it meant, it meant something to me from a guy, from a different perspective. A guy who brought so much joy, fun, comedian, made everybody laugh, and died so, I can't say tragically, but just so alone, you know, by himself, and he, he actually took himself out th at that point, and it reminded me of the depression. That's the biggest issue here now, is, um, and I have a family and friends, uh, I've had people that passed away because of depression and suicide, so it really hit a core for me, and it was, um, it, it was my way of giving back, not only to a man who made me laugh and smile, but also to honor my friends that passed away as well. What do you hope people look at when they see the mirror? What do the, you hope they feel from that? I mean, what do you hope they take away? Well, um, what we do, it's something that we don't, we don't get anything back from it really except feedback. We, we want to bring the same laughter and joy and give to those to remember him in that, in that way. And Mears over here is a um, big time artist out in New York, started a group called Five Points. We'll talk about that again a little bit more in the future. It was, it was a sporadic thing. Actually, I, I started working on the, that mural before he passed. Uh, and then we got news that he had passed away. And I was like, you know what, let's uh, turn it into a tribute. We had uh, more space on the wall. And um, 
In this particular project, it was it was just uh, a spur of the moment thing, uh, something that, like I said, wasn't a monetary thing. It was just uh, showing appreciation, tipping a hat. To go online, we, we had to find an image that would be uh, perfect for this. We wanted to use an image that kind of showed him in his in, in his more higher moment, where he's, he seemed a bit happier, uh, and and that's the the image we wound up using, and uh, and and found a quote that you know, that he had made at one point in time, which kind of tied into aerosol art culture as well, um, which was cool. When you do a collaborative, last question on this, when you do a collaborative project like this, how do you work that out? How do you work it out between the three of you to do certain parts, or is it certain talents to each? How, how does that work? I guess it's certain talents to each, because he's really good with faces, Mears is great with letters, he's the best, and I'm happy that they just let me join in. That's basically it. I mean, Mears is one of the best in the world. He's known internationally. And he's really good with faces, and he's done a lot of projects, and he's well known also. Where can people see this in Brooklyn? Um, it's actually Mears has his own personal wall. Oh, okay. I am not kidding. He has his own wall. So you said you can't. I mean, where where's this located? Yeah, I mean, in this instance, you can't. But I mean, that's the power of uh, social media. Uh, this this photo has been seen by thousands already, if not more, and and that's you know through Facebook, Instagram, uh, etc. So um, that, that you know, that's the power of the uh, the internet. What response did you get when from fans and that? What was what something off that you really remember? I mean, a lot. I, I we've been getting a lot of positive uh, comments. You know, everyone had their own attachment to him for what one reason or the other. Uh, you know, most don't know him personally, and and uh, you know the fact that he entertained and, and made everyone smile through the years. They felt you know somewhat related to him in in some form. So. Uh, the response was was a good one, you know. It it, it gave everyone uh, that one last smile. We'll have more from those three artists this weekend on FYI Weekend. Now from the desk of Hazleton Public Transit. Transit officials have announced that the 95 Summer Loop Service will end on Friday at 9.44 p.m. Penn State Route 90 will resume on service on Monday at 6.15 a.m. Well, here's another reason you should purchase Thursday's standard speaker. While many area school districts get a jump on the new school year by starting classes before summer's last hurrah, Hazleton area won't ring the school bells until after the Labor Day holiday. Don't miss this back to school preview in the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Coming up in just a little bit on FYI, we continue our football previews with the Marion Colts. And coming up next, we'll tell you about a long-standing tradition in the Borough of Weatherly. This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. In your community right now, we are talking about some joint activities going on with the Chamber of Commerce, Hazleton Power, and also the Downtown Hazleton Alliance for Progress Group. As you know, there are many activities going on in Hazleton's downtown, not just for people of Hazleton, but through McAdoo and Cunningham and Freeland and West Hazleton and the surrounding areas. So we welcome you to join us here as we revitalize Hazleton's downtown. Tamara Herzberger is with us now to talk about a, her initiative, and it's called the Open Door Project, right? And yes, it is, and it's an exciting, it's new, it's just to bring some art downtown. Okay. Hazleton Power is um, kind of the force behind the art side of mm -hmm. getting some culture downtown. So they are, um, I'm actually initiating it, they're supporting it. Okay. And um, what it is, is it's it's just a door. Mm -hmm. You decorate the door. You can make something out of the door. And we're going to display these doors downtown during our second Friday of September, which is September 12th, I think. Okay. So if someone is just learning about all these new events, what is the second Friday events that we're having in downtown? Second Fridays is where all the downtown business open, like they open mm -hmm. up from 4 to 10 o'clock. And they just, there's art shows. It's just to get everybody downtown. But it's, uh, it's, it's really an initiative to get people out, mm -hmm. get them downtown. There's a lot going on. Just bring town some life back down. Okay, we have musicians, we have the farmer's market. So there's a lot of collaboration with the second Fridays that are happening. So the door project, if you have an old door or you can get an old door from Tamara, 
It could be, you know, your, your family's incorporating a theme that you want to do for your door. Right. It right. could be an individual project, mm -hmm. a group project. Okay. It can be a company project. Neat. Okay. And what we're going to do is, I actually had 30 doors donated from Forrester Environmental from the Valley. Great. So they brought 30 doors to my place. You can come. I have the doors. You can paint the door, do whatever you want with the door. And then we're going to display them. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to vote on them and just put them around local businesses to support the project. So you don't really have to paint the door or do something with the door. If you're a business and you want to support the project, contact us and that would be a big help. Okay, for the project guidelines and registration forms, you could contact home. Uh, www.downtownhazelton.org. Okay, so get involved. You know, this is the time where we're going to join hands, have unity in the community, right? Exactly. All right, so next week we are going to talk about a 5 and 10K town and trail run. I'm excited about it, are you? We'll talk about it next week right here on FYI in your community. Time now for FYI News 13 Weather. The Hazelton area Cougars are still having two-a-day practices and this morning the weather was great at Harmon Guy Stadium and the place looks great for 75 years old, huh? Let's see if our local weather forecast looks good. This information comes from the National Weather Service. Tonight there is a 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms. The low will be 62 degrees. On Thursday we bump up that chance to 50% for showers and thunderstorms and it stays like that in, at Thursday night. The low will be 59 degrees, 30% chance on Friday, the high is 73. At night, we'll get down to 56. Still a chance for showers in the area on Saturday. The high is 71. It will be mostly cloudy at night, the low 55. Sunday looks nice, a partly sunny day, a high of 72. And at night, it will be partly cloudy with a low of 53. Tonight's weather is brought to you by Valley High, the area's oldest ice cream and fast food restaurant. Stop on in for a cold treat, including our ice cream and yogurt, or some hot food, including our burgers, hot dogs, fries, and much more. That's Valley High, Route 93 in West Hazleton. Treat yourself today. Today we are talking about a very special event that dates back to the days of World War II. I'm here joined by Tim Rossman, who is the fire chief of the Lehigh and Lausanne Fire Company in Weatherly, the LNL Fire Company. And you're talking about the LNL Fire Company's big homecoming celebration this Saturday. Chief, thanks for being here. Thank you. I really appreciate the offer of letting people know about our event. Now, you were telling me uh, that this does date back to World War II, so tell us how the connection is there. Uh, my understanding is from uh, one of our longtime members is that uh, the event was basically named the homecoming to welcome home the, uh, the veterans from World War II. Um, and I believe the event started uh, 1945. Wow, that's pretty impressive. And it's still going strong to this day. So now you're going to be having this big celebration this Saturday, and it's from 3 p.m. until midnight. Tell us where it is and what's happening. Okay, it's at the uh, l, l Fire Company grounds, uh, 390 South Lehigh Gorge Drive, off 940. Um, we've got a lot of good things going on. We've got plenty of things for the kids to do. Um, bounce house, uh, lots of games, uh, uh, definitely a little change from years past. And you have entertainment and there's also alcoholic beverages, I believe. That's correct. Uh, there is a beer tent that uh, will be there for the adults. And uh, the entertainment is the Genie Zano Band. Um, a lot of people may not be familiar with that name, but uh, she was one of the founding members of the band Flaxy Morgan, which is pretty popular in the area. So we're very excited about having her here. Well, I, th I think she's very well known. Yes, so that's a really great draw for you as well. Tell us how important this homecoming celebration will be to the fire company and its operations. Uh, it's, it's one of the most important events that we have. Uh, normally we run it two days. Uh, this year we're only doing one day because we kind of ran into some some issues, but uh, unfortunately, and uh, we are, the reason we do this is to pay for the fuel for our trucks, the electricity, just the general maintenance and upkeep uh, throughout the year of our fire company. Uh, we really don't get a lot of funding 
um, from anybody else. So we're basically uh, supporting ourselves. Um, the average fire truck today costs uh, a half a million dollars. Um, you know, fuel, we all know what cost of gas and, and fuel is these days. So um, just heating alone, you know, that it's very expensive. And uh, we have a very limited number of volunteers, just like all the other fire companies in the area. We're, you know, we all need help. So an event like this uh, is something we need to do to um, keep us alive and keep going. All right, well, this is a big event. And remember, again, it's only one day instead of two. So it's this Saturday, August 23rd, from 3 p.m. until midnight, 390 South Lehigh Gorge Drive in Weatherly. That's the LNL Fire Company homecoming. Come on out, help the volunteer firefighters raise enough money to keep them operational so that they can better serve you. Thank you, Lisa. As always, on tonight's community calendar, let's move on to that. A Peach Social will be held this Saturday from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. at Faith United Church of Christ on Faith Drive off of the Airport Beltway in Hazel Township. A yard sale will take place at the same time. Food items include, get ready for this, Belgian waffles with peaches, peach crisp, peach crumb pie, barbecue, sausage and pepper hoagies, ice cream with peaches, and baked goods. And of course, there will be tricky trays as well. Let's go to the green screen with lots of numbers on it. It's your midday winning Pennsylvania lottery numbers. The daily 671, big four, eight, nine, zero, nine, Quinto, 17444, Treasure Hunt, 156122. Our football previews continue next on FYI. This is FYI News 13 Sports. There's a great scene in Across the Universe featuring the Beatles song, It Won't Be Long. YouTube it because it's exactly how I feel about football. It's probably an unhealthy relationship to have with a sport, but I'm sure I'm not the only one. We are inching closer and closer to the start of the 2014 season. And here's our second football preview all about the 2014 Marion Colts. Longtime Marion Catholic head football coach Stan DeCosti makes sure his players leave the program with these two lessons. We have two models. Never forget where you came for, from, rather, excuse me. And the other one being that, you know, don't let the game use you, use the game. You know, and we always talk about being a means to an end. And those models are constantly talked about. You know, never forget where you came from. When you leave here, try to make sure the program stays the same or better. And our alumni take that to heart. If you want proof of how those two lessons resonate with current and past players, DeCosti has a story. We had a young man from Florida, Bruce Fetz, who redid our, his family redid this beautiful part of our stadium, uh, played at Phil Scarch, Boston. You come down to practice last week, he's up from Florida to say hello to the players. Stuff like that. There's a real connection between our alumni and, and, and the players that we have playing here now. Picture the Marion football program as one big tapestry of championship banners. Just last year, the Colts added to that legacy with an Eastern Conference championship, and the stable is filled with talent for another run at a trophy. Well, we bring back Ethan Kaczynski, a quarterback. We bring back K.J. Snur, who'll be our tailback, was a quarterback to his injury last year. And Nick Sully uh, at uh, a uh, fullback for us. Uh, we bring back most of our line, which is really important to us. Receivers, Nico Gusty, Matt Carnish. Don Mazzolini, Chris Weber, and uh, Hunter Noss, and then we have an addition of Andrew, Angela Miskornik, uh, who's joining us this year, is going to be a great addition for us. Uh, Aaron D'Angelo at uh, tight end, great addition for us there too. A lot of the same cast will play defense as well. The Colts are set at kicker and punter with K.J. Snur, but they still are looking for return men. Overall, they're a group dedicated to the cause. We know our, our schedule's daunting, but we have 45 young men who are committed to uh, bringing winning football to Marion Catholic High School. And to be successful in this expanded anthracite league, as you look at the league, what do you guys have to do this year? Stay healthy. I, I think we've got 40 strong numbers, but we've got to stay healthy, develop our younger kids and JVs as the season goes along. Uh, and our athletes, uh, we've, we've got athletes, get them in space to make plays. The Colts will start weaving the next part of their impressive tapestry on Friday, August 29th at Men of Marion Stadium against Williams Valley. I couldn't think of a way to transition from a Marion story to a Tamaqua area story, so I will just apologize to the two rivals 
and move on. Blue Raider fans, there's a number of different fall sport and entire year ticket packages now available. To find the one that is right for you, the Tamaqua Area School District does have information online. and You can access that information through a link on our website on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash FYI News 13. Let's go to the scoreboard. This is the FYI Standard Speaker scoreboard and in golf, Tamaqua beat Jim Thorpe. Anthony Lewis had the low score with an 81 for the Blue Raiders. On the tennis court, MMI lost to Wyoming area. Jessica Smith won a singles match for the Lady Preppers and MMI's number two doubles team of Claire Sheen and Kelsey Donaldson also got a victory. For full recaps of the events on our scoreboard and for more local sports news, you need Wednesday's standard speaker. It's Wednesday and here's some delicious alliteration. It's signature steak night at Bottlenecks. All of their signature steaks are only $9.95 plus bottomless soup and salad for only $2.95. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. One announcement for this evening. Happy 90th birthday to Veronica Astorino. This was comes with love from your family and friends. And in honor of Veronica's 90th birthday, her family's asking everyone to be a part of her birthday card shower. You can send a card to Veronica, 66 Oak Street, Drums, PA, 18222. And again, happy birthday to Veronica. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Aaron M. Leshko of McAdoo. The funeral will be held Friday at 9.30 a.m. from the Damiano Funeral Home. Mass is at 10 a.m. in St. Michael's Byzantine Catholic Church. Friends may call Thursday from 2 to 4 and 6 to 9 p.m. at the funeral home. Gertrude R. Stagina of Freeland. The funeral is Saturday at 9 a.m. from the McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home. Friends may call Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. Gary Schimmel of Freeland. The funeral will be held privately and at the convenience of the family from the McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home. Robert Rizuda, formerly of Hazleton. The funeral is Thursday at 9.15 a.m. from the Hagen Chamberlain Funeral Home in New Jersey. Carmela Franzosa Umbriac, formerly of Hazleton. No local services were announced. Albert D. Cup of Freeland. The McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home will announce complete arrangements. And Robert A. Kleintop of Hazleton. Services are Friday at 10 a.m. from the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. Friends may call Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. Tonight's obituaries have been brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop located on 15th Street in Hazleton. For delivery to all local funeral homes, call 570-454-0111. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name right now on News 13, you'll have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Our winner tonight is Mina Kinnick of Freeland. Mina, if you're watching, give us a call right now, 570-459-9813 to win your free movie. When I started thinking about marriage, I said, dear Lord, just give me a super cool mother-in-law. My prayers were answered, and happy birthday to my mother-in-law, Cheryl Deese Abella. Thank you so much for everything. If you are interested in our football previews and you missed one, don't worry. I'm putting them on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash FYNews13. That's it for tonight. Take it easy, everyone.